Yo, what's going on guys? Arax here and welcome back to another Monster Hunter Cross video and another episode of the Weapon Workshop. Apologies that there wasn't an episode last week. I was over in Japan, but I am back now and we're picking up where we left off and taking a look at the Hunting Horn. A weapon that is quite often overlooked and similarly quite rare to see online, but it's a weapon that has enormous potential and when used correctly can be an absolute powerhouse, as well as a godsend for your fellow teammates. So without further ado, let's get started. Once again, we find ourselves in guild style, as this will be your starting point and it will be what you're most familiar with if you're transitioning over from Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate. The main difference off the bat is that you also have the ability to equip two hunting arts, and there are some pretty awesome ones for the hunting horn, so this is definitely something to consider. Also, before I get into the actual moves themselves, I'm going to take a moment to explain how the horn works, just in case you're new to the weapon. So to begin with, the Horn is a weapon with great KO and exhaust potential, much like the Hammer, with the added bonus that it's also a support weapon, thanks to its ability to buff both yourself and your teammates. When you perform attacks, notes will appear at the top of the screen here. In this case, X attacks play pink notes, A attacks play light blue notes, and X plus A attacks perform dark blue notes. If you look at your equipment details and go to the last pages, you'll find a list of songs. Songs will vary depending on the hunting horn you have, but for the purposes of this video I'm going to use the special variant Tetsukabra horn. The songs from top to bottom are movement up and this is something that every single hunting horn has and it's also the one buff that applies only to you and not your teammates. Followed by stamina negate large, wind resist, defense up large, clairvoyance, anti snowman and negate stun. In order to play a song you simply perform the corresponding attacks to produce the notes. And once it's lined up, you press R to play it, and you'll gain that buff. And most of these songs can be played twice to increase the effects. For example, a horn with, say, a song for earplugs will provide you with high-grade earplugs if you play the same song twice in succession. You can also encore the song to play it again to save you having to input the commands again, but we'll go over that when we talk about the moves. For the time being, that's a brief overview of how the horn works. However, in Monster Hunter Cross, there's one big new addition. See, Horn is often used as a support weapon at a distance to buff before actually moving into attack. But in Monster Hunter Cross, the new change in place actually rewards offensive Horn users. See, if you attack a monster, instead of getting the single note, you get a paired note. If you play a song comprised completely of paired notes, it'll then not only play your current song, but it will also play or encore the previous song you played. So if I played Movement Speed Up, followed by a paired note Wind Resist, for example, upon playing it, I would then play Wind Resist, as well as movement speed up again, therefore encoring the previous song and providing me with the double benefit. So in case you're wondering, playing movement speed up twice also gives you my desire. Of course this isn't necessary for all songs, but it is a powerful ally to have that rewards horn users that aren't afraid to get stuck in. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's talk about the moves. Hunting Horn actually has a pretty basic set of moves. With your weapon sheath, pressing forward and X will perform an overhead slam, and with your weapon drawn, this can be replicated again with forward and X. Pressing X whilst idle will perform an upswing, and pressing X a second time will perform the overhead slam that is also accessible through forward and X. And this double X combo can be looped infinitely. Pressing A performs an upward golf swing, which is great for KOing monsters, and pressing A a second time performs a spinning swing, also known as a flourish. And this second A attack is special, because after the first swing, you can input either X, a or X and A for a free second note, which means if you're trying to queue up a song quickly, this is a great move to use. And if you want to go straight into this move, you can press forward and A to avoid having to go through the first A attack. X and A will then perform a backward swing, and pressing forward X and A together will then perform an overhead slam. And while this slam is powerful, it will also knock your teammates flying, so be mindful if you use this online. And again, you can press X and A continuously to cycle between these moves. Pressing the special button on the touch screen will perform a little jab with the hilt of your horn, and while this doesn't do much damage, it is quick and it counts as an A attack. So it's a quick A note should you need it. It also deals cutting damage in case you were interested. Pressing R will then play the song you have queued up. Note that these gold squares around the notes mean that you have a song queued up correctly. If you just have random notes, then pressing R will be a waste of time. After you play the song, you'll receive the buff, as will your teammates if they're in the same area. However, if you press R after a forward attack, you'll instead play the song like this, and press R after an X and A backward slam and you'll perform it like this. So you can combo into it instead of just sitting there and doing it from idle. However, it does not end there. If you press R whilst playing the song, you will then trigger the encore. This plays the same song again without you having to perform the moves to input the notes. And given that most songs have additional effects if you play them twice, 
be that extending the effect duration, upgrading the effect, or giving you a different effect on top. Either way, playing songs twice is highly recommended. So for example, as mentioned, two movement speed up songs will give you movement speed up and mind's eye. Negate stamina large twice will give you that and an extended duration on that buff. And wind resist twice will give you that, then a large wind resist, so you can begin to see the value in encoring your songs. Obviously, if you don't have the opening to encore, you can run away and simply play the song again, but ultimately, encoring is the way to go because it saves time. You can also input left or right while pressing R to encore to again change your attack animation and your positioning slightly should you need to. And finally, jump attacks. Jumping off a ledge and pressing X or A or X and A will perform the same overhead slam, but depending on the input, will of course yield the corresponding note. So you can complete a song with a mid-air attack should you need to. The important things to bear in mind when using a hunting horn are that A, at the start of a hunt, you should always play the movement speed up and mind's eye combo because movement up turns what would otherwise be a sluggish and slow weapon into the fastest moving weapon in the game. You even run faster than sword and shield users with their weapon draw. And on top of that, try and keep an eye out on your buffs and replenish them before they run out. Ideally, if you're playing aggressively, you can constantly keep them topped up, but either way, using a horn without buffs is like using an insect glaive without extract or a charge blade without files. You just don't do it. Now moving over to Striker Style. Once again, your first draw for this style will always be your ability to equip three hunting arts. And as mentioned, the horn has some pretty good ones, so this is something you might genuinely consider. However, as is often the way, that bonus comes with its sacrifices. Striker Horn is quite drastically different. You no longer have the forward slam or forward X from either your unsheathed attack or with your weapon drawn. Instead, it now comes out like this. A is now a quick hilt stab which can be chained three times, so there is no golf swing and no flourish, meaning no free double note. And X plus A now goes straight into the overhead slam and there's no backless hit, meaning your main method for getting your X lane note is also highly likely to send your teammates flying. Also, all your regular attacks are now just button dependent and have no directional inputs. So your combos are quite simply XX, which can be looped, but the nice thing about this one is that it does give you two golf swings which can be spammed for some pretty good KO damage. Alternatively, you have A, A and then A for the previously mentioned triple stab, and then standalone X plus A for the slam. You can however still input a direction during the encore to reposition yourself. Aside from that, there's not really much else to it, but as you can see, some pretty drastic changes. Definitely a lot more streamlined with some of the previous complexities removed, but if you're a previous horn user then this might not be your thing. Now moving over to aerial style. To begin with, once again you can only equip one hunting hot, so make sure you choose wisely. However, as the base moves go, aerial is much more in line with the original guild style. Most of the moves you lost through striker style are back, the only glaring omission is the flourish or the second A attack. Your second A attack is now the hilt jab, so again no free double note, but aside from that, everything else is as it was. The same X combo, the double X and A slam, everything else is the same. You also now have the ability to jump off a monster, a teammate, a bomb, etc. And doing so makes up for the removal of the flourish attack. See jumping off a monster now allows you to land two very quick attacks to stack up two quick notes in succession. When jumping off a monster you can press X, A or X and A to perform the same attack, but obviously the input corresponds to the colour notes. You can then follow this first attack with a second hit, again either with the same input or a different one if you're after a different note. And then once you land, you have a number of different options. You can either input a third attack, again either X, A or X and A for a neutral attack, giving you one more note. Alternatively, you can press B to roll out, or you can press R to move to the side slightly and play the song. So in short, Aerial Style is very good at racking up notes quickly. Finally, moving over to Bushido style. Again, you can only equip one hunting art, so make sure you choose wisely. As for the basic moves, well Bushido is actually identical to Aerial in that respect. Once again, the only omission is the second A flourish attack, meaning no double note from there. But instead, you get the hilt jab, and again, everything else is the same. But of course, where Bushido style differs is that it has Bushido evade, and it's during the evade that you have some pretty great options. See, after an evade, pressing X, A, or X and A will initiate a triple swing attack. And while you could quite simply press nothing else and the attack would still finish, the merit from this comes in your ability to sneak in two extra notes free of charge. See after the first swing, if you input your attack of choice, again this could be X, A or X and A, and you'll play that note during the second and third swings, and you can mix these inputs as you see fit. Do note however that X is the only attack that works if your weapon is sheathed during an evade, but provided your weapon is drawn, you can begin the attack with any input, and then sneak in the extra notes. So for example if you begin by pressing X, we get a pink note, but if you then press A, followed by X and A, we'll get a light blue note followed by a dark blue note. Alternatively, you could go say X, X and then X, 
A, X and then A, or X and A, X and A and then X. You get the idea. This attack then ends in a slam, and from there you can either input another button for a neutral attack, you can press B to roll out, or again you can press R to play the song. Now, before we wrap things up, let's take a quick look at the three weapon specific hunting arts. To begin with, you have Orchestra Soul. This will play all the different songs your hunting horn can play, all at once. So in the case of this horn, I have seven songs. So activating this art will play all seven in one, which is great if your buffs have just run out. Following that, you then have Sound Attack Tremor, and this art involves playing the horn with a pressurized shockwave which results in a really powerful slam. And finally, you have Full Orchestra, which for a limited time, gives you the ability to play those paired notes without having to hit the monster. Meaning, should you want to, you can encore up a few songs out of harm's way, before diving back in. So with all of that out of the way, which style do I like the best? And for the first time since doing these workshops, I'm going to say Guild Style. Given that the Hunting Horde already has a relatively basic moveset anyway, the ability to have all of those moves at your disposal, plus two hunting arts, say Orchestra Soul and Full Orchestra, means you've got some really great potential, with no penalty whatsoever. That being said, Striker is nice for the easy double swing which you can use to spam KOs, and if you're new to Horn, then this might be a good, slightly more simple place to start, and of course Aerial is great for racking up notes quickly. To be honest, there isn't really a bad style for Horn, so again, it's down to personal preference, but for me, I would always pick Guild. And that, my friends, is pretty much it. Make sure you tune in next Wednesday for another episode of the Weapon Workshop, and if you have any questions, by all means, let me know down below. If you guys enjoyed the video, then it would be awesome if you could leave a like. And thanks for watching, take it easy, catch you next time, peace out.